guys, Lori here. I'm here today to do another Top 10 Tuesday for you, and this prompt was super interesting. I don't even know if this is the week that it was supposed to go up, but when I saw it, I immediately had to film it because I thought it was fun. And it's basically the top 10 reasons that you know you're a book lover, or the top 10 reasons that things that happen, that happen when you're a book lover, and I just thought that was so cool. So I'm going to tell you guys my Top 10 list. They're probably going to be super funny and super embarrassing. But if you're a book lover, you'll at least understand or follow me or at least get me a little bit. But I just thought that this would be a fun video to post um, because, you know, I like to make people happy. And it's reading and lo I love to read. I love books. I love this community. I love reading. I love making videos for you guys. So these are just some things that popped into my head when I saw that prompt. And I hope that you guys, if, I hope you guys find that yourself in me. I hope you guys see some of these things like, oh yeah, I totally do that. But let's dive into the video. So the first reason that I think you know if you're a book lover is you have a book collection that is bigger than anything that you own <laughs> and you are constantly trying to find locations for your books, which is always my problem because I go to so many conventions and so many book things that like I just have a very large collection of books and my problem is you're always trying to find more space for your collection. Because a lot of my books are signed, or a lot of my books are like signed first editions, and I love my books, so it's hard for me to get rid of them sometimes. Um, but I have gotten a little bit better since I've become a theater teacher. I've been trying to like give away my books to my students when I'm done with them, but there are some books I just will refuse to get rid of. Um, like example, I think I have at this set point, I have like four sets of Harry Potter that I refuse to get rid of because they're all like special to me. Um, but yeah, so I have a very impressive book collection that I really need to find good homes for because if my books get damaged, I will not be a happy camper. Number two on this list is my, some of your favorite activities involve reading and also shopping for books, and you're not embarrassed to admit that. I spend hours, probably when I'm commuting to and from the city, which I'm not doing right now for obvious reasons, but when I do, I do like spend a lot of time reading and listening to audiobooks, and I'm having, I've had to be a little bit creative in recent weeks and how to still get my reading and listening time in but those are my two favorite things to do and I will easily easily cancel plans with people if I'm like well I'd rather read my book and people are like are you crazy and I'm like maybe um but I love to do that I love to read I love to fall into stories I think it's a great escape and I think it's just something I've always loved since I was little since I can remember anything I remember reading and I think that it is one of my favorite things to do and I also love like shopping with my friends hanging out with my friends going book shopping we make like a whole day of it we go to Union Square which is, there's like so many bookstores and we just have a fun day we get pizza we vent about what we're reading we swap and share books with each other which is something that I've loved to do with my friends because we all go to the same conventions but we never get the same exact book so we sometimes swap them and yeah so that's a super fun thing that I love to do I love to read and shop for books. Those are my two, what, two, some of my favorite activities, and I am hopeful that this quarantine will not last too much longer so I can go book shopping again in a real store, um, but for the moment, I am surviving on my, AL, my ALA books, which I'll talk about in a bit. Number three is you plan your vacation days around your book conventions. <laughs> this is something I have to do, especially since I became a teacher in the DOE. I don't have a lot of personal days every year, but I definitely use all of them for my book conventions every year <laughs> and I do it every year my boss must think like I have a wedding every single year that I go away but I am carefully save my vacation days and my personal days and I use them for book con every year and for um, New York City Comic Con every year and I love it it's like it's like a like it's like it's like a mini vacation that I give to myself and I always stay in the city for BEA and it's just a fun time and I like to turn off my brain for like a weekend and just have fun. I'm so sad that it got pushed back. I'm so sad it's going to be a smaller event this year, but I will be there. If the convention is happening, I will be there. I don't care if it's lesser people. I don't care if some of the publishers aren't even going to be there, but that is one of the conventions that I look forward to every single year and I really do enjoy it. It's so much fun, and I'm really looking forward to whatever they do wind up doing this year. Even if it becomes a virtual event, I will still be attending because I love book conventions. Book conventions are definitely my one of my favorite things, and I will talk about the, the book convention lifestyle later in this list. Number four, and this one is funny because not everyone does this, but I do this. I plan my time at my bookish conventions like it's a tactical mission with lists, schedules, and plans of attack. I know not everyone does this, but I do this. I recently went to ALA and that was not the situation at hand and I felt like a little bit out of my element. I'm like, how do I do a book convention without lists and schedules? 
but I really do. I really plan my time at a bookish convention like a tactical assault. Like I do. I have lists and schedules and I like to know what's going on, what I can get, but I do plan my time at a convention like a tactical assault. It's so fun. I love it. But at the end of the day, I come home and my brain's like fried from like wait from like planning. But it's so fun. And I really, really love it. If you've never had a chance to go to a bookish convention, I would highly recommend it. I maybe wouldn't recommend BEA if it was your first convention ever or even BookCon if it was your first convention ever. But I think that they're so fun, so enjoyable. And as I say in my tips and tricks video that I make every year, go in with super low expectations and you're bound to have a fun time. Um, because it's not all about arcs. That's what I always say about conventions. It's not about arcs, it's about the experience. But that's definitely something that I know about myself as a book lover. I plan all my bookish conventions as a tactical assault. Another one, which is number five on my list, is that authors will learn your name and your life story if you go to enough of their events. This has happened to me many, many times. And it's because in the before I became a theater teacher, I, I went to a lot of book events at Books of Wonder, which is definitely like a smaller venue. And I literally can walk up to some authors and they just know my name and they're like, oh, Laura, hi. And they just sign my book because they know me. And I think that that's so cool, especially because you like read these books and fall into these worlds and love their characters. And then to meet them as a person and develop a relationship with those people, I think is so fun. Like Adam Silvera knows me by name. Some other authors know me by name. And I just think it's fun. I just think it's like a fun little thing that you could tell people like, oh, Adam Silvera knows my name. Um, I tell the kids that and they, they, they're like, they, he does not listen. I'm like, he does not. Um, but I think that that's just fun. And I think that that's like how you cause sometimes just have to like treat authors like they're just people. Like they just are. This is just their job. But I think it's fun when they can like, it's like, oh, I saw you last year. What's your name? And they kind of like, no, I'm a theater teacher and stuff like that. So I think that, I think that that's kind of fun and enjoyable and you know it's just fun it's just like a fun little fact that I think would be interesting or what happened to you if you are a book lover and live in an area that has a lot of book conventions I'm lucky enough I live close to New York City I can go to book events when time allows um but yeah so that's another thing that about you that if you're a book lover may happen Number six is that your TBR changes so much throughout the course of a month that when you look at your previous TBR video that you made, it is so not accurate. That's been happening to me a lot, especially in recent times, because it really have changed what I want to read. I've been watching a lot of booktube videos for people doing their readathons and stuff, and it's really changed what I want to read. So I really do make a TBR, and then I kind of just like go off of that. Um, but it really does change. Like I may start the book as saying I'm gonna read this book, and then at the end of the month, I have no desire to read it. So. But that really comes from watching so much bookish content. It really changes what, like, I wind up reading or what I want to read. But my TBR does change dramatically. I try to, like, stay, stick to my TBR. doesn't always happen, but it tends to change just because I'm watching so much bookish content every month that it really does change what books I want to pick up. But the good news is that it also does expand my reading genres a lot. Like, I've read a lot more books in a lot of different categories than I probably wouldn't read in the past. But... It does change a lot throughout the month, and BookTube and the book bookish community is a large reason for that. Number seven is your Goodreads goal is something that you put a lot of careful thought and planning into, and it is a big part of how you spend your life. That is so true for me, and it it's become a little bit easier in recent years because I do have a lot of commuting time normally, so I do have a lot of reading time for the most part. Um, but I literally sometimes I remember getting so stressed out when I was behind on my Goodreads goal and I was like, okay, this is not going to stand. Um, but now that I've like also taken up audiobooks and I've, you know, but it's, it still is a very, very big part of my life. If I notice like I'm like 10 books behind, I probably won't pick up a big dense fantasy because it's going to take me longer. But also like I, I tend to spend a lot of time reading because I want to have a, a higher number goal than I even schedule for myself. Like every year I set my Goodreads goal for a hundred. My ultimate goal one year is to read 200 books in a year. I don't know if that's ever going to happen, but a, my good goal does play a big part of my life. I will say that. Like, I like seeing my numbers higher than my good goal. Like, you're such and such books ahead. I think right now I'm 20 books ahead, but I like to see that number. It makes me feel like I'm accomplishing something. I'm a very, very goal-oriented person, a very, very planner, and seeing that number so high or getting high makes me very, very happy, but... Goodreads goal definitely does play a big part in my life and how I plan my week and my weekends. Eight um, is, eight, sorry, eight is that you think you know booktubers on a deep and personal level because you watch all their videos. This is totally true. Like I've run into people like booktubers in real life and I could have like a whole conversation with them 
just because I watch their reading blogs. Like, I think it's just fun. Like, I like, you know, I I, I know some booktubers. Like, I know Alexa. I know Mackie. Not per- like, I know them. I see them a lot. So it's Super Space Chick. But some booktubers who I've never met, like Kaylee and Peru's Project, like, I just feel like I know their lives so well because they blog about it. And I know their reading taste so well. I feel like I can recommend them books because that's just what we do. Like, I spend a lot of time watching reading blogs because it's nice background noise when I'm reading myself. But I definitely get, like, emotionally invested in people's lives. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Are you, you got married? Like, oh, my God, Millie's getting so big. So, you know, you do form bonds with people that you follow on social media, even if you've never met them. There are some booktubers I have I will never meet, but I still, like, follow them, and I think that their lives are super fascinating. So you become weirdly connected to book people that you've never met before. And that also goes to social media friends. I have social media friends that I've never met in real life, but that I really, like, have a bond with, and we talk a lot, but I've never met them. I just talk to them on book communities a lot, and we become friends that way. So that's just, you just, you develop friendships in unique and different ways thanks to the bookish community, and I love that. Number nine is that so many of your book, your friends are book lovers as well, and you've met them in various ways through social media, booktube, book conventions. Book conventions is how I met, like, most of my bookish friends, I'll be honest. There's about 17 of us that we met at book conventions, and we still talk during the year. We go to book conventions together. This year is going to be a little bit more challenging because I know most of my friends, because the dates got switched, can't go this year, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, a little bit on the sad side, but I'm still super excited to see them in the future, and I still love catching up with them. I still love trading arcs with them, but it's something that I really, really look forward to. So a lot of my bookish, a lot of my friends are bookish lovers in some way, and I just like that. That's just something that I really, really thoroughly enjoy. And the last way that you know you're a book lover is you spend hours online at these book conventions waiting to get an advanced reader copy of a book. You swear it's going to be the first book that you read, and two years later, after the book is long out, a sequel has happened. Probably it's probably the last book in the series has gone out. You have still not read it. <laughs> still not read it. That is the case for so many books I get. I, like, wait, I'm so excited for them, and then I don't read them until so many years later. But... I still am super so excited to get them. I'm so happy I have the ability to get arcs. I think it's just fun, but it just makes me laugh that, like, I spend so much hours waiting in line for books, and then it takes me five years to read them. But I hope that you guys are staying safe and safe, staying healthy in these trying times. Um, let me know what are some ways that you know that you're a book lover, and I'll talk to you guys later for another video. Bye, guys.